On behalf of GGKLI, I would like to welcome you all to the Vasant Panchmi function by the GGKLI students and teachers. And their kids have worked hard, the volunteers have worked hard, the teachers have worked hard. So we would uh, really appreciate, please enjoy Kariye. And uh, applause for all the performing and applause for all the parents who are over here. Thank you so much. And at this point, I would like to invite Pragna Ji. Please uh, start the event. And uh, you always appreciate what Pragnaji does for us. It's, it's so much from the bottom of the heart. Thank you so much. It's, um, we are doing nothing. We are just an instrument. So, uh, but thank you. So, I have a wonderful person that I wanted to introduce to. I'll just wait till everybody's Um, before I even start, I'm going to ask you to do Gayatri Mantra with me. So if you don't mind, please sit up nice and tall. Yeah, just like that. Look at all my friends, they listen right away. Thank you. Close your eyes. Put your hands together. Think of the bright sun. Om. Join me, please. Om. Reading? Of course, what, what is it, friends? Yeah, he said loud. Everybody say it together. When I say one, two, three, say Vasant Panchmi. One, two, three. Vasant Panchmi! Awesome. So we are going to learn about what is Vasant Panchmi? Why is it so special to us? What do we do in Vasant Panchmi? The real Vasant Panchmi is next Sunday. But because we don't have school, we are going to celebrate it today. So Vasant is a, you know, spring. In India, it's a, they welcome spring. But it, it is also a day to, um, dedicated to Saraswati Mata. She's the goddess of knowledge, right? And it is very special to us at Gayatri Gnan Kendra of Long Island because our Guru Dev, Pandit Sri Ram Sharma Acharya, this was his spiritual birthday. And throughout the world, there are 15 million people. And all of us, we celebrate this day as his birthday because this was very spiritual for him. This is the day he knew what he had to do on this planet. And he said, I'm going to create this place as a heaven. This whole earth is going to be turned into heaven on earth. And who's going to do it? All of you, my friends. All of you, young children. They are the ones who are going to change the world. And that's why we think of him with all our sincere prayers. And, you know, we celebrate, think about his life. What can we learn from it? He wrote 3,200 books. What can we get out of that? What can we learn from his life and enrich our lives? Um, and I know Pramin Uncle is here. I'm so excited that he was able to join us this year. And, you know, all of our prayers, see, God listens. God listens and he's the biggest miracle that he's doing well and is here. So everybody give him a big round of applause for him. 
Terry Lanky is going to talk about, um, you know, Gayatri uh, Vasant Pachmi more at the end of the program. But right now, um, I have a mission to introduce a wonderful, wonderful person. And I'll go back in time when she was a little girl. She was only, I think, six or seven when I saw her and met her. I knew there was something amazing and special about her. She was so sincere. She was so humble, so polite. Uh, she had ways about the way, you know, she would speak. And forget it, nobody can defeat her in debate. Nobody. She was the best of the best in debate. And, um, you know, she attended a lot of camps. We have the camps in summer. And I know nine or ten friends from here, they had joined us two years ago to, uh, for summer camp. It's run by Gayatri Pariva and um, people from Canada, from United States and from London, they come together and we have these great camps. And I was teaching one of the class, uh, you know, uh, in summer, and she was in my class, her brother was in my class, and you know, she, this was the girl who opened her heart to me. And I, I have to tell you, I wanted to hug her when I found out what she was going through. I hope you don't mind, but I felt I needed to share this. She came to me and I said, Peter, you look a little sad. Can you, can you tell me what's going on? And she opened her heart and she told me her dad had cancer. He was going through such a hard time at that time. Mom had the similar issues and she was going through such a hard time. Now, can you imagine she has an older sister, two years older, and a younger brother. And they felt the burden of it. Like, what are we going to do? Both our parents are so sick. You know, and I shared my story with her. I, I'll never forget. And I said, Vita, there is a bigger mom and dad that's going to take care of you and your mom and dad. And, you know, we talked about that and how that had helped me in my life. And I remember clearly telling her that never give up on Gurude or Gayatri Mata because they are your true mom and dads for everybody. And I remember, you know, uh, I felt like that special bond with her. And I, I kept on telling you, but didn't tell you her name. It's Durva Tribedi. Can you stand up with her? I can please give a round of applause. Thank you. Let me tell you. So this is Durva. And um, so her journey didn't stop there, right? She was, she lived in Chicago. She went to Boss and Skarshala, just like us, just like we have Gayatri Nankinder. Since she was little, she attended a Boss and Skar in Chicago. She, all the way till high school, all the way. So you can imagine with her personality, all the wonderful things she did in Chicago. She even now, she talks about how wonderful it is that she would go back and help out. She came from Queens today. She works in Manhattan, right? She came 6 o'clock in the morning, took a train to come here just to be with us and give us her input as to how this has helped her. What has Gayatri Mantra done for her? How has her life changed, right? And guess what? She's so brilliant. She was picked by Princeton just like that. She went to Princeton. You know, that's the first, the top, top, top college in America. She went there, look how humble she is. She has no airs that she went to Princeton. She doesn't even say that. You would notice, I am the one who wants to tell you that yes, nothing is impossible for us. She always says, oh, I studied in New Jersey. She would never say I went to Princeton. Some people would brag, oh, you know, where I went to college and they would brag about it. Never, I've never heard it from her mouth that she went to Princeton. She always says, I went to New Jersey, I studied in New Jersey. So rather than me telling you all these wonderful things, I'm going to give it to her so she can give us an inspiring speech. She's our main speaker today. So everybody, huge round of applause for her. Bernadette gives me way too much credit, but I have been very, very lucky to have her as a teacher um, at some of these camps that I've been to, and also just a mentor and a friend, and um, so you all are very lucky to get a chance to learn from her. Um, 
And speaking of early trains, I have a question for everyone here. How many of you, especially with this last really cold week we've had, um, had to kind of drag yourselves out of bed this morning? Or, uh, or earlier this week. Okay, all right, I see some kids brave enough to raise their hands. Adults, it's okay, you don't have to raise your hand. Just, just acknowledge it, it's hard, right? It's cold and you have to drag yourselves out of bed. And you know what, I, I have to do that pretty often too still. And I remember, like Auntie said, I started going to Tagai um, Trimandir. We met every Sunday, so I was, I, I was in Chicago and um, we met every Sunday for these balsam scar their classes. And I would go, it was early on in the morning on a Sunday, I was like, I don't know school, I have to wake up so early for this, right? Like, would have to drive myself out of bed, but my parents, they would, they would insist that we go. And so, my sister and my brother and I, um, we always attended. And even when I begged my parents to let me, you know, sleep in or show up in sweatpants, they were like, no. This is important, let's, let's go. So at first I was just kind of going through the motions. And um, at Mandir, at the Balsam Skar Gandhar classes, at our Mandir, we would learn, right? We were learning how to chant prayers, how to do yoga, meditate, understand scriptures, and celebrate Hindu festivals like Basant Panchami. And we also learned about Gurudev and Mataji and um, from there, I started to get more and more interested in Gayatri Bariwa and trying to understand what that meant. Um, and so, we would also go to these camps in the summer where we would do all of that and more. We got a chance to learn about Vedic principles, the Gita. Um, we asked a lot of questions and we had really patient teachers like like Bhagnanti and, and like Mitesh Pai who would help us to work through those questions, and it was always okay to have questions, which is cool, right? Like, you guys know that whenever you're in class, you can just ask or tell, tell someone sitting next to you, like, oh, I don't really know about this. Like, I'm not sure. Faith is a journey, right? So if you have questions, like, it was exciting that this was a place we could bring those questions. And so we had debates, both formal and informal, like we were talking to each other, but we were working through some big ideas together. Um, and and so I learned. I learned about bhajans and Sanskrit and also about like friendship and community. And I got a chance to make some really cool friends who were going through all of this, all of these classes with me. And um, so even when sometimes it just felt like going through the motions and you had to drag yourself out of bed to get to class on time on a Sunday, um, we showed up. And I didn't realize at the time, right? Like. Sometimes it would be, raise your hand if you've ever been uh, at a puja and everything is in a language you don't understand. Yeah, yeah, me too. Raise your hand if you've ever been at a puja and you're like, oh my god, this is three hours long, now what do I do? <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, raise your hand if you've ever tried to meditate and your mind is wandering and you just, it doesn't make sense. Thank you. Yep, me too. All right, cool. Okay, so all of that would happen, and I would be confused, but, you know, we kept, we kept showing up. And, and sometimes I wasn't sure if I was showing up because I wanted to show up, or because it was a habit, or because I was going with my parents, but I did know that I had some awesome friends that I enjoyed getting to see. Um, and I liked hanging out with my family, and I loved getting to spend that time with my parents and my sister and my brother. So we would go. And... I didn't realize when I was actually at those Balsam Skargander classes what the really important lessons I was learning were. Um, but I was learning them. And by the time I got to high school, I started, I started realizing how valuable it was. I started actually volunteering and teaching some of the really younger kids. And, you know, we would, I organized a, a blood donation drive once. Like, I was doing volunteer activities and community service hours for school at the Monday and just getting more and more involved. And, and my family also, like Bergnanti said, um, things got pretty difficult sometimes, right? Like when someone in the family gets cancer. That's really tough. And um, so we started doing at home too Swadhyaya together, which, do you guys know what Swadhyaya is? Yeah? Okay, some people are nodding. So it was, it's basically just um, 
taking some of the teachings in, in those books that uh, Pragnanti said Gurudev has written over 3,000, or just in any book of Hindu teachings, and discussing with each other and, and trying to pull insights from that. So my family started doing that together. We would light diyas, and we would just come together to be near God, which is the boss right? Um, and so we did, we did that. We did a lot of family time, and it was, it was good family time. Because even though there was a lot going on and it was tough, we were trying to stay um, stay resilient and cope. And um, and then on Sundays, you know, I would do like we were praying together with Boston Scar and their friends, um, and learning about sadhana and different strategies for sadhana, and just and you know, we were having a good time. Um, and then the college application process came around, and I had a lot of anxiety about going somewhere really far away. Um, I started to apply colleges, like Auntie said, in New Jersey, and I was scared because I wasn't sure if I wanted to be that far away from my family and my friends. And this Monday that I had come to really think of as a second home, like I was so nervous sending out college applications, I literally drafted everything and waited until we went to Monday so I could click submit because I was just. I wanted to seek blessings from Gurudev and Mataji. I wanted to make sure that whatever good energy I could find in the world, I was near when I was making these like big hopes and putting them out into the world. Um, and when I finally decided to move out to the East Coast, like I was really nervous, but I was also at that point traveling with this deep conviction that Gurudev and Mataji's blessings were going to travel with me and this community of friends and family and. Bariwa was going to be in every corner of the world and, and traveling with me, and that, and that support was traveling with me. And so I didn't have my friends or family. I was living in a dorm, and people from all over the world were just living really different lifestyles. And I had to figure out um, whether on my own, when I, and I know like a lot of you kids haven't done this kind of thing before, but like when you get to college, especially if you live in a dorm, you have to decide your own schedule. You have to make your own mind up about what is the first thing I do in the morning? What is, what do I do in between classes when I have extra time? What do I not do? How, how often do I call my mom? All of your, all of your moms are like every day, twice a day, don't forget. Um, but you, you know, you have to decide. And I have to decide too, like, am I going to keep saying prayers? Am I going to keep making time for yoga or meditation or or is this something that I just do with my family when they drag me out of bed early on the Sunday and I have to show up and it's fine, I'm here, but you know, it, it's just, it's a question you have to ask. So I, that was a question that I was asking myself and I thought I had to make this big decision, right? But I realized, this is where I realized what the really important lesson I had learned from all of these years of Boston Sarah and there actually was, right? Is it's not even really a decision anymore if you have if you have developed that faith and that and that practice. Because all these years, what I had been doing was using the Gayatri Mantra as sort of like a proactive coping mechanism, I would say. But I realized, even without deciding, when I woke up in the morning, like today, I, and, I, and I did some organized um, sort of like Hinduism connected activities, right? Like I joined the Princeton Hindu Satsangam and we would celebrate things like Navratri and Diwali. So I would go to those, but also every now and then I would just, I like would be under some kind of stress or reeling with some loss or terrified or confused or hopeful or grateful or honestly even sometimes I would look at the clock and it was 11-11 and I would just say Gayatri Mantra. Like it was automatic, right? It was almost subconscious. It was just Silently, I would be reciting Gayatri Mantra in my head. And I realized it wasn't going to be so much an active decision as just a part of who I was. Like, it came naturally to me because it was a practice. And that's why a lot of people call um, religion something you practice. Like, oh, I practice Christianity or I practice Judaism. And I finally realized what it meant. Like, I practice Hinduism because I, I like, I've just done this. It's like you do it again and again, and it, it is kind of a practice. And, um, and so it wasn't so much that I made the decision that on my own, individually, I was going to remain rooted in this tradition as I just, it, it, I, it, it's like it came to me and it's within me and I think that I'll always grasp at Gayatri Mantra for comfort or for um, 
or for some sort of expression of faith, right? And it's there is a lot of trust, right, you're putting into, into God when you pray. Like, dear God, if there is a God out there, I hope that you hear me, right? And so that that was when I realized that I had this really amazing toolkit of ways to reach out to God and to divinity and to pray and to try and see divinity in the people around me and the places around me. So all that to say, um, I, I actually gained a lot more from Balsas Gargindra and from going to Gaiti Mandir than I thought that I might. And um, a lot of that too was just the friends that I made there and the community that I got to feel a part of um, at the Mandir that I grew up going to every Sunday. And, um, and also I got a chance to learn how to celebrate. And I'm a big believer that any excuse to celebrate is a good one, but this is also a really particularly exciting one because Muslim punch me, like Andy was saying, and it marks the beginning of spring. And if you look around outside, it's still really cold, so um, you might not think that it's really the beginning of spring, and that's okay. But one thing that um, Dr. Saib said once in, um, at one of these camps, he was speaking, and he said, you should think about the cycle of life and death as analogous to every day, right? So. Uh, he said something along the lines of So, like a, a new birth every morning and a new death every night. And that really stuck with me through the years, and I keep thinking back to that. So, if you were to think of like a new day as sort of a new life, um, and, and in that context, think of just spring and celebrating renewal and rebirth and growth. Um, I hope that you all get a chance to um, just reflect on that and, and celebrate that sentiment with, with your friends and your families. And, um, and I hope that someday, whether it's in college or wherever in the world you go to do fantastic things, you get to look back on being here as something that um, gave you a lot, right? Like, yes, you have to drag yourselves out of bed on a cold day to get here, but, um, and that's okay. And it's good to have questions, and that's okay, and I still have so many, but, you know, you're going to get, you're going to get a community, and you're going to get a toolkit, and, and probably so much more. Hopefully you'll be able to teach me um, all the things that I still have to learn, because there are so, so many. Um, but yeah, I just, I am really, really happy and grateful to get to be here with you. So, I mostly just wanted to say thank you for being here, and for giving me a chance to come back to um, to, to Boston's Gargendra and to come back home in a way. Thanks. Thank you so much, Durva. I'm sure our GGK Life students must have really been inspired hearing you that if we have determination, dedication, and are rooted to our culture, we can achieve so much. So at this point, I would like to invite Narendraji to please start the event to share with us to according to for the prayer and to share with us according to Gita what is the importance of Yagna. Thank you so much, Narendraji. First of all, with the profound conviction, I want to pay my tribute to this great soul Acharya whose birthday is today. He envied certain things and he implemented those. His life is a true reflection of Karma Yogi. Today, I would like to share with you another concept of Yajna. And before that, I would like to recite a couple of verses from Srimad Bhagavad Gita and Vedic thought. Om Brakato Kunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Samakrabha Nirviganam Kuru Medeva Sarvakareshu Sarvada Om Mangalam Bhagavan Vishnu Mangalam Gargad 
मंगलम पुंडरी काक्ष मंगलाय तनो हरि ओ कर्मन्यवादिकारस्ते माफले शुक्दाचन माकर्म भले तुर्भो मात संगोष्ठ विकर्मनि योगस्था कुरु कर्मानि संगम त्यक्त्वा धनंजया सिद्धि सिद्धो समो भूत्वा स्मर्पम योगा उच्चते यानि शासर्व भूतानाम तस्याम जाग्रति संयमि यस्याम जाग्रति भूतानि सानिशा पश्चतो मुने दिवर्ड जगना is a Sanskrit word and its meaning, simple meaning is offering, offering, giving. But the wisdom of Srimad Bhagavad Gita relating to this particular word is a state of mind. State of mind. Yajna is a state of mind. And there are three states of mind. One is Sattvic, Tamasic and Raisic. Raisic is in the middle. So, Yajna relates to the first concept and that is Sattvic state of mind. Sattvic state of mind means selflessness. In that state of mind, whatever you do, walking, talking, eating, sleeping, interaction with people at home, in office, does not matter where you are. If your state of mind is sattvic and your mode of mind is selfless, whatever you do is a, the most superior offering to the divine forces. In this visible world in which we live, this is only one person. 99% creation is invisible. It is not visible to the naked eye. But to invoke the energy, the celestial wisdom hidden in the invisible divine forces, you got to create a state of mind, sadhguru state of mind, which means you have to become selfless, empathetic, compassion, kindness, these qualities will promote your state of mind and in that state of mind, whatever you do, whatever you do, it will be qualitative, the best. And Bhagavad Gita believes that as an individual, each and every person must do their the best. Anything less than that, Bhagavad Gita does not support. So get oriented with this action-oriented philosophy and create intentionally with utmost devotion and compassion this state of mind, yajna, yajna. And then you interact with the society, you will change the society. In the process, you will change. Thank you very much. Jai Shri Krishna. Nimaji and her class to please come for the prayers.
Well, yes, but break it apart. You get mum and ba. Get it? Mum, ba. <laughs> That's so funny. Give me another one. Fine, just one more. Why did the astronaut send a rose to the moon? <laughs> Why? Okay, come on, use your brain. I'm not going to give you the answer that easily. At least a hint. Okay, it's a sweet. Is it rasmalai? I love rasmalai, it's so good. <laughs> um, okay, do you still want the answer? Of course! Because he loved gulab jamun, get it? Gulab jamun? Lol, that's really funny. Hey, I have one. What type of bread stays complete even if you eat it? Garlic bread? No, Anya, I'm disappointed. It's really easy. Puri, get it? Puri is complete in Hindi. Oh, you're actually getting the hang of this thing. I know, right? Um, I'm Sid, and I'm going to be doing some cricket, tic cricket, uh, uh, cricket trivia for you guys. So, can I just ask one question to y'all real quick? Rams or Patriots? Give me a cheer. Rams fans over there, I see. Los Angeles finally has something to cheer for. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to ask a question, and uh, you guys can raise your hands. I'm going to point to someone in the audience, and you guys can answer, whoever I point to. And uh, Sejal will give you the mic, so we can hear you. Who is the all-time runs leader in test cricket? Does anybody know the answer? Anybody? Uh, parents can raise their hands also if they know the answer. You over there, right there. The black jacket. What's the answer? You better get a question right here. That's correct. Give him a round of applause. Great. So this is this must be an easy one because my dad told me. Uh, what does LBW stand for? Ah, a lot of hands go up. Ronnie, what does that stand for? Left before wicket. That's correct. Give him a round of applause. Now, this one. This is a hard one. Or a little bit tricky. Which IPL team, located in Pune, also shares the name of an NBA team based in California? Anybody? Over there? In the uh, white, black, and maroon jacket? Yeah. You there. That's you. Is that one here? Yes, correct! The, uh, the NBA team in California is the Golden State Warriors. Um, now here's a tricky one. Anybody that know a lot about cricket? Anybody know a lot about cricket here? Like a lot? I know you know a lot about. That's my dad over there. He knows a lot. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Uh, who was awarded the ICC Player of the Year Award in 2007? Eh? Eh? I got out of there. Anybody? Anybody know the answer? You there. Right there. Prakash Uncle. Is that Rahul Dravid? No, that's wrong actually. <laughs> you there, black jacket again. Can you go two for two? <laughs> no, that's actually incorrect. You guys give up? Oh no, right there, right there. I'm trying, I don't know. Virat Kohli? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, right there, right there. Who? That's actually incorrect. The correct answer is Ricky Ponting. <laughs> so here's a here's a really hard one. Where is the 2019 Cricket World Cup hosted? Where is it hosted? Right there, right there, over there. Who is it? England and Wales. That's correct. And what edition is it? No! <laughs> you won, you're so close! 14. No. The 12, it's the 12. I heard somebody yelling over there. Uh, uh, how, how much do you think the Rams are gonna win the Super Bowl? By how much? How much? I'm here, I'm, I'm here at 100 points. I don't even think that's physically possible, but uh, okay. Alright, I think I got time for one more, one more question. Who holds the record for most wickets taken in test cricket? I'll repeat the question, who holds the record for most wickets taken 
in test tricking. In the back. Uh, uh, over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's correct. Give him a round of applause. All right, can everybody that answered a question correctly please come up here? Even if you answered incorrectly, if you gave if you give it an answer, just please uh, come up to the stage, get your consolidation consolidation prize. <laughs> Positive characteristics in your children, provide great sun stars in your children, create atmosphere of peace, cooperativeness, love and tranquility in your family. Improve the mental and physical health of your family members. How to do belly vishya dev yoga. First cook the food with great love and purity by chanting Gayatri Mantra with the mindset that you are cooking for your chosen day. Take out rice or chapati separately in a small plate without salt and add ghee and sugar to them. Make five tiny morsels from the chapati or rice pile. Next on the stove, put the copper tray, yakya, khand, or any small utensil and turn the flame on. Then chant the one at a time and offer each morsel into the fire. After this, sprinkle water around the khand or plate and say, Om Shanti. Shanti Shanti and offer the rest of the food left on the plate as we shout to all the members of the So you can spare two minutes to do achieve all these benefits and turn your meal into prasad. They then pay attention to what we were about to show you. We'll start with Gayatri Mantra. Tad Savitur Vareniyam Vargo Deva Sadimai Diyo Yona Prajodaya Idam Brahme Idam Namama Om Bhur Bhava Swaha Tatsavitur Varenia, 
वर्गो देवस्य धीमहि दियो यो न प्रचोदया इदं भूताय इदं नमो Bring them light, 
So body weight show is nothing but the simple yoga you could do for two minutes. And it really will help your family. You'll see yourself. Even if you don't trust me or you know, Gurudev, just try it as an experiment for a month and see the difference in your children. I'm telling you, even if your household, everybody will benefit from this. So if you are serious about it, please come see me. I have the book and the kun that, you know, if you want. Um, I believe in our children and that's why like, I wanted to make sure that whatever I bring, I bring for the children. I did not bring, I didn't do one shopping for our family. I brought all the things, you know, that I wanted to give to volunteers, to teachers, and books and things like that. I also brought, some of the parents have requested books in English, these little books. I have brought that for you. So as a parcel, I would really like you to give one to each family. So please, before you leave, we have parcel, we have granola bars and juice for the children too. Along with that, please pick up one book per family. I have that. So if you are interested in doing the yagya, please come see me. I would be very happy to offer this to you from Gurudev. And I believe in um, us and we are family. Just like she said, Parivar, we truly are Parivar. And all your children are part of our Parivar. And we want them to flourish and we want them to be Muhammadans. So, so please uh, do your part as parents. We have to nurture them, we have to give good sons to and this is one of the ways. So thank you. So we're going to be doing like joke trivia, I guess. Um, and can we please ask Hindi Group 4 to go to the side of the stage? Okay, so the first one is, what does a spider do on the internet? Oh, and um, Sejal will give you the mic. Person right there. Standing up. So you've done a web. Close. It crawls the web, but. Okay, so another one is why is 10 afraid of seven?
Well, his mommy, but yeah. <laughs> okay, last one. How does the duck buy the In the dental. With this buck? No. Repeat the question. Uh, how does a, the duck buy lipstick? Lipstick. No. <laughs> he goes to the sea store. No, she puts it on her bill. <laughs> Thank you. Social media and various other tools, but imagine what it was like in the 15th century. Yes, there were people back then who influenced society. Poet Kabir Das is one of them. In our next event, is going to recite a few Dohas by Kabir and will explain how relevant they are even in present day to day life. Uh, can you please welcome Hindi Group 4? And can Coach Group 3 please sign up by the stage? Kabir Das was an Indian poet, saint, and an inspiration to many Hindus. Kabir Das was famous for writing poems called Dohas. There is a Doha for every life situation. The birth of Kabir Das remains shrouded in mystery and legendary. Kabir Das was one of the pre three previous births of Param Puja Gurudev. Those three births were Kabir Das, Samarth Ramdas, Guru uh, Shivaji, and Ram Krishna Paramahans, Guru of Swami Vivekananda. Next slide. Bura jo dekha na chala. Bura na. Bura na koi mila. Bura na koi milya koi. Jo mun khoja apna to mujse bura na koi. This means that I started searching for the evil devil, but when I couldn't find anyone, I searched inside of me and I found out that the devil was me. Next slide, please. Boti par par jagmua pandit bayana koi dai akar prem ka pare so pandit koi. Meaning, just by reading books, none became wise. One who understands the word of love only becomes wise. Sukhme sivinan sab kare, sukhme kare na koi, jo sukhme sivinan kare, to duk kare na koi. In despair, everyone prays to God, but not in joy. If we pray even in joy, we will not have any sorrow. Kal kar so aaj kar, aaj kura so ab pal, main par la hoi je, puri kare ja kap. Tomorrow's work due today, today's work now. If the moment time is lost, it will never come again. Ninda Nari Rakya Angan Kuti Chavya Bin Pani Bin Sabun Nirma Kare Sabun. Meaning, keep your critic close. You get to know your faults if someone criticizes you. Critic helps you to clean the rubbish from your life without soap and water. Pache din, pache gaya, hari si kya na hai. Ab pachta hai mut kya, chidiya chum gaya ke. This meaning is we have to use the best use of our opportunities. If we don't use it right away, the time will never come and we'll only have regrets. Jati <laughs> 
मोल करो तलवार का पदा जेहान दो मियाँ मीनिंग don't ask his the holy man ask his wisdom or knowledge but gain the price of the sword and leave alone the sword of cover kabira kada bazaar mein maangi sab ki care na kuhu se dosti na kuhu se pyar meaning kabir was impartial he was not attached to any religious group he chose the market place to preach because people of all religions go there. Kabir preached the truth and wanted welfare for all. Bada hua to kya hua? Jaise peet ka jhoor, bhanti ko chaya nahi, phal lage ati dhoor. Meaning, it, it's no use to be tall like a deep palm tree as it neither gives shade nor does it allow its fruits to be plucked with In other words, be humble, loving, and pleasant, and greatness will follow you. Thank you, everyone. So, uh, at the end, I want to thank uh, Pranav ji and uh, Praveen ji for uh, giving the uh, uh, you know opportunity to talk about Kavi Das, and even with kids. Uh, Uh, I have also learned uh, all these Duwani, even though I learned it in the, in the school. But uh, again, reading them and then understanding, and uh, uh, the the script uh, which I gave for the series is, I was thinking about what should uh, you know they should be telling, uh, and uh, and then I also read about Kabir Das, uh, 15th century. That's long back. Uh, and now we have these tools so we can communicate and all but at that time he communicated and so well and still so relevant on every every day life uh, very simple very simple to understand um, so it was uh, very nice uh, you know to present this uh, thank you very much thank you very much to you all Discuss changing your thoughts through Guru Dev's quotes. Please welcome Group Three. Also, M M C Phyllis, Pearl Gupta, and Krista Chawla. Please get ready. The way you would not like people to treat you. Don't be a dreamer. Be a doer. The follower of truth has the strength of a thousand elephants. Everyone, without any discrimination, is entitled to worship Gayatri. God, God does not ask for success but for effort. If God gives pain to somebody, it's only for a good purpose. Live your life smiling and laughing like flowers.
What do you call cheese that's not yours? Woman with the black jacket. No. <laughs> the answer is his jaw 
Joe's friend's name was he, because next year he will be 16 years old. Okay, thank you.